Okay. It's 9 p.m. on the island of South Caicos. Okay, guys, come on over. Let's get the net out there. Shark researcher Dr. Aaron Henderson and his students from the School for Field Studies are deploying a net across a shallow estuary in an attempt to catch young sharks. We set up what are called gill nets. It's basically a wall of net and we stay beside that net and we mainly do it at night time so the sharks don't see the net and as they're cruising around doing their normal business they accidentally hit the net and get tangled up in it. We're right there when that happens, so we remove the shark straight away. We take a variety of measurements. There's three different length measurements. We take their weight. 1.56. We put a tag in them. It's like a little microchip, which gives each shark a, an identity. 900. Zero zero. Yep. 1080. Zero 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 00537. And we collect a tissue sample for genetic analysis as well. OK, so that's going to go into this bottom for two of them. Okay. And that all takes two or three minutes, so we try and do it as fast as we can to minimize the stress on the shark. And once we've collected our data, we walk the shark through the water to make sure it's getting lots of water over the gills, and then we just let them swim off. Sharks are apex predators, occupying a top spot on the marine food chain. They play a key role in maintaining balance in the ocean, Yet, shark populations around the world are in decline, mostly due to human activity. Sharks are under a lot of pressure around the world. They're heavily fished as target species and as bycatch, so shark populations are in serious decline. And there are, aren't all that many places in the world where you can go and study sharks that haven't been studied already. So this is one of those places. South Caicos is part of the Turks and Caicos Islands, a British overseas territory that lies just southeast of the Bahamas in the western Atlantic. The clear waters surrounding the eight main islands and numerous keys are a diving paradise. Seven, three, two, one, roll. Vibrant coral reefs and a deep ocean trench harbor a stunning diversity of sea life including more than 300 species of fish, sea turtles, whales, and elasmobranchs, such as sharks, skates, and rays. Here, college students from across the U.S. come to the School for Field Studies to get their feet wet, literally, with real-world marine biology research. Dr. Henderson and his students are trying to better understand the dynamics of the local shark population so that policies can be put into place that will enhance their protection. It may be hard to believe, but sharks are very important in the marine ecosystem, even to the health of the coral reefs. Shark populations control the populations of the organisms that they feed on. So when we have large populations of sharks, they're going to prevent overgrowth of the populations of other things that they feed on. But if we take the sharks out of that equation, whatever they feed on, their populations explode. And then whatever those organisms feed on, their populations collapse. That can cascade all the way down to the habitat itself. So just by removing the sharks, you can end up with reefs that are overgrown with algae rather than being healthy reefs. One key feature of the research focuses on the effectiveness of MPAs, or marine protected areas. Marine protected areas are sections of the ocean that restrict activities like fishing or collecting shells, providing a safe haven for marine life to flourish. The Turks and Caicos Islands has a, a system of marine protected areas that are there to ensure that their marine resources aren't overfished and that any fishing is sustainable. But nobody has actually looked into whether these MPAs were designed appropriately, if they're the right size or if they're in the right locations. So what we're doing at the moment is assessing whether the MPAs actually offer any protection to the sharks. There are currently 34 established protected areas that span the Turks and Caicos Islands, including four marine parks near the School for Field Studies Research Station. But they're not gated in. There's not a fence around them, so fish can move outside of those MPAs or inside the MPAs. If it's protected, it will spill over and go to those outside areas and repopulate and enhance those areas as well. Sharks are highly mobile animals, so if it's just a small MPA, they might be spending a lot of time outside that MPA where they're susceptible to fishing. We're very interested to see what type of habitat the sharks are using, if those areas are protected, and if not, what we can do to maybe extend the boundaries of current marine parks to ensure that the sharks are protected. Catching baby lemon sharks involves some long nights for the students. 
but the data are helping to shed light on the effectiveness of MPAs for sharks in South Caicos. No, it's not a recapture. Oh. Zero, zero, five, three. Research-wise, what we're looking at is how the um, nursery habitats around South Caicos um, are used by the sharks. What we found is that the abundance of juvenile lemon sharks is much higher inside the reserve relative to outside the reserve. And we also have uh, greater numbers of newborn sharks inside the reserve as well. Well, let's scan and see if there's a pit tag on. Yeah, you got some good stuff there. Uh, so although we found that they are more abundant in the MPA, our research is continuing to determine whether it's the protection of the MPA that's causing that or whether it's simply the preference for the habitat that's in that MPA. While all the students on this unique study abroad program will have the opportunity to work with sharks, some will delve further into the study of these fascinating predators and make it the focus of their research project. All students get an opportunity to work on this. Uh, we, we run this all through the semester. So generally a couple of nights a week we go out uh, looking at the juvenile lemon sharks at least. And then when it comes to the second half of the semester when the students undertake their directed research, I take on about 10 students to specifically work on this for their research project. And while sharks are pretty exciting subjects, it can be hard work. During the directed research phase, we might be out early morning and late night, so the day might start at 6 a.m. and might finish at 12 a.m. or 1 a.m. So it's quite a lot of work in the field, and then the equipment has to be maintained, the nets have to be repaired on a regular basis, so there's a lot of work involved. And I think initially when students hear about shark research, they get very excited. Then they come out in the field and they see the reality of field research, that it is actually hard work. Because there's so much to be learned about sharks, students have little trouble coming up with project ideas and research questions. In an interesting twist, student Mariah Beck is studying how sharks are responding to being studied. So I'm looking at what's called the condition factor, which is basically like a statistical measure of their health and looking at if the health has um, particularly declined with sharks that have been captured or handled by us. Some sharks we've caught as many as six times and we catch them in different locations, so that tells us a lot about their movement patterns. And we also measure them each time we capture them, so it tells us about their growth patterns as well. Are you ready for the measurements? 55.6, 60.9. The sharks that students catch in gill nets are juveniles, but Dr. Henderson and his students also have several ongoing projects looking at mature, fully grown sharks out on the reef. To conduct surveys of which species are occupying the waters off South Caicos moving in and out of the MPAs, the shark team places baited cameras on the ocean floor and lets the camera run for a few hours. Later they retrieve the cameras and search through the footage to see what showed up. Quite a few interesting shark species live around the island. Nurse sharks, Caribbean reef sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks, and even great hammerheads have visited the cameras. The team also tags adult sharks, but to do that, they need to get them close to the boat. Out in the deeper areas, we use what are called drum lines. So these are baited hooks, uh, but they're set up in a way so that if a shark gets hooked, it can still swim around in circles. So it's not just trapped on a hook where it might suffocate by being kept in place. And we set out maybe five at a time, and we just keep rotating around, checking them to make sure uh, there's nothing on them. So the, the longest amount of time a shark's gonna spend on one of those hooks is maybe 15 minutes. And as I say, they, they can swim around during that time. So when we get back to them, we tie them up beside the boat, we keep them in the water, because they're larger sharks and we collect the same information or length information we give them tags and we collect tissue samples for genetic analysis. So I have a passion for sharks so every time we rope the shark off on the side of the boat to work it up I get the same adrenaline rush. Student Nick Weber needs a tissue sample for his research on the diet of sharks that live inside the protected areas. So the team snips a tiny piece of skin from a nurse shark's tail. I'm on the reef shark project and so I'm going to conduct a stable isotope analysis and look at the different trophic levels within species um, between inside the MPA and outside of the MPA and see if there's not only a difference in trophic level but also a difference in sort of what the sharks are feeding on or if there is a difference. Researchers at the School for Field Studies are also looking at a species related to sharks, the spotted eagle ray. 
Both sharks and rays belong to a subclass of fish called elasmobranchs that have a skeleton made of cartilage rather than bone. Spotted eagle rays are in high abundance in South Caicos. At a site where eagle rays often frequent, intern Connor Burke free dives with a camera on a pole attempting to get close enough to do photo identification of the rays based on their spot patterns. The spot patterns are unique to each individual, like fingerprints. He hopes to identify individual animals, learn the social structure of the eagle ray aggregations, and figure out if there's a pattern to their movements around the islands, perhaps even understanding why they go where they do. All of this information can then be used to suggest conservation measures for the species. Each of us has a critical role to play in protecting our environment for the present and future of plant, animal, and human life on Earth. Students and faculty at the School for Field Studies are doing their part by contributing to a growing body of knowledge about marine protected areas and the multitude of species that live there.